Hey everyone, I'm Nito King and it's time to return to folklore. Let's head back into Arcadia, this time as Keats, to see what's changed. Looks like our first couple of people to talk to are actually rebels instead of fairies. And most of these look familiar. All right, very little new material there. Which I think is what Livane and Belgai are all about. A pretty familiar phenomenon, I think, since we've done chapters as both Ellen and Keats, and the times don't really seem to match up. Let's see if there are any karmas in here that I can unlock in this chapter. Yellow dusts for Trent I'll probably be able to get. And nothing else leaps out as obviously something to shoot for. So I guess I'll just capture the folks that are here and see what happens. And of course our first folk is going to be Hawk. Like I said in Ellen's Bestiary, Hawk is kind of the puka of Orcadia. Even more so when you see how it actually attacks. And I'm going to need to absorb a bunch of them. So for Keats, this works a little differently than it did for Ellen. It's just a melee combo attack. Same as Puka, but it hits a narrower range, the attacks are a bit faster, and it's a lot more likely to hit more than once per swing. I just need to absorb a couple more of them and I'll get the full combo. Until I do, I should probably use Puka. It's stronger, and I really value having the full four hit combo. And I gotta rank up right away, which is definitely gonna be a good thing for this chapter. So now I should be getting three hits. There we go. And you can see that when you're not actually hitting something with it, the attack is a lot faster. Still a bit weaker than Puka, so... I think I'll probably switch back after I'm done with this guy. Yeah, fire is pretty effective. Yes, it's not too much of a surprise, and I need six more of them should take no time at all. As before, we're gonna go around the long way, make sure that we take in every room without too much backtracking. Ah, 
honestly, it's going to be more of the same for a little while. Same getting poked in the butt every time I turn around. And we've got floating crystals. I think I'll deal with those later. I got a suspicion somebody up here will be able to help me get to them. We get Barrager, who's pretty much the same as he was for Ellen, but more fun. And now I get the full combo for Hawk, so why not switch over? This is actually one of the few switches that I made while I was playing the game originally. Whenever I got the first folk in a new area for Keats, I'd switch to it, just to see what it was like. And here's Barrager. As you can see, it doesn't move independently from Keats, but that has its advantages too because I can just hold down the button and aim freely. I'm going to have to get over to the other side, because Barrager doesn't have a very long range. But I can just sweep it across as wide an area as I need to, and if there's an enemy that'll be stunned by such weak bullets, I can hold it at bay for as long as my MC holds out. The drain while you're holding down the button is actually really low. Very manageable. I guess the downside is that Keats can never summon more than one of any of the folks in this region at a time. And I've got to capture more barragers and just defeat any generic folks with it. Well, I don't need to capture any more hawks for the moment, so why not? Barrage is actually kind of fun to use, so I certainly want it to be as powerful as it can be. Which, sadly, isn't all that strong. But it does a pretty good job of taking down a folk when it's already stunned. And, of course, this guy I really do want to absorb. Because that's going to be our third new folk for the area. Bullseye's got a nice long range, can hit enemies from really far away, and has a sort of interesting feature that we'll be seeing in just a bit. I kind of distracted myself by looking at my karmas, I didn't want to capture that guy. Although capturing folks is rarely a bad thing. Yeah, I'm not building up a karma with it, but I'm still getting the experience. So the final room of the first half. Of course, lots of folks everywhere. They just throw everything at you in this room, and bullseyes are so annoying. I'm gonna try to get out of the line of fire and take out the bullseye first because they'll just plink away at you from any distance. Granted, you're not too threatened if you keep moving, but using folks like Barrager prevents you from moving. Not usually a good idea to be pinned down while you're fighting anything, let alone something that's an actual threat. The one downside to Barrager is, if you do need to move and readjust your aim, then it costs a lot of MC to bring it back out again. Otherwise, I'm going to try to use fire as much as I can, because it's probably the most effective element to use against most of the folks here. Interestingly enough, there's that really loud machine gun-like sound sometimes. I think it's from attacking these red walls here. You'll notice whenever my attack hits, you hear that really loud sound. And when I stop attacking, the sound goes away. Knowing that actually might change the way I fight, because I'm going to try to avoid attacking too close to it. 
Now at this point, it strikes me that I haven't found a picture book page yet. There's usually one somewhere in the first half that'll at least tell you how to fight the mini-boss. At least if there's anything about the mini-boss that you need to know. I guess there weren't any picture book pages for the first mini-bosses. But for those, all you really needed to do was attack with non-elemental. So what else do we need to do with Barrager? Defeat five Afank. Yeah, that's not going to happen this chapter. So I might as well just go ahead and capture the last couple of Hawks, get that experience, get stabbed in the back. Pinky Punk is a lot of fun. And as a combo attack, it's actually pretty useful to stick on your square button. I'm not going to do that quite yet, though. You always want to try to show off some of the new folks, as well as keep using the old ones. And there's nothing here. No mystery stones, no picture book pages. As far as I can tell, you just have to go into this one blind. So I've just got this one big room with lots of soldiers to fight my way through. And of course, you want to take out the ones with the guns first. Extra green dust, usually good, seems to be kind of a rare upgrade item. And lots of hawks. Tons and tons and tons of these guys everywhere you turn. They are no match for fire, though. And I want to make sure to kill all of them. Is you never know, maybe entering this room from this entrance is the key to making a picture book page appear. I don't honestly suspect that would be the case. But, it can't hurt to try. Let's see what Bullseye actually does. Get a distance from this guy. And that's it, just one shot. But, you can shoot it pretty rapidly. It's not weak. Does about as much damage as a Puka attack right now. And, of course, I can build up some more Karmas for it and make it a bit stronger, I think. The more interesting property, though, we won't be seeing for a while. Let's finish the last couple off in style. I like this rapid-fire fist attack when I use a folk that's got a combo attack. I haven't really experimented too much with the effect that different folks have on Transcension. I really should. But from what I can tell, folks with rapid-fire attacks like you know, Puka, Hawk, Pinky Punk, he's got that mini fist attack, the uh, Kenshiro style, I guess. And for something with a uh, single shot or a shield, he's got that big area attack. So this is our mini-boss. Unfortunately, I don't have any Legend of Dragoon voice clips to go with. VOLCANO! And this is the first mini-boss we've seen that's accompanied by other folks. I love that pose the hawks strike when they stop running. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing too much of it, but... The reason you want to take these guys out first aside from them being smaller and easier to destroy, is that Volcano can order them all to charge simultaneously. And if there are enough Hawk running through a space at once, they can be kind of hard to dodge. Otherwise, we're now down to just me versus Volcano, and it's not a particularly difficult fight. Of course, he's vulnerable to non-elemental attacks, and most of his attacks are pretty slow. As long as you move before they can target you, you're generally going to be safe. It's a big explosion, though. 
you do have to watch out for the area effect. Fire doesn't stretch too far from the barrel, so you get some distance and you'll be okay. And if you just keep moving laterally while you keep him targeted, he's not much of a threat at all. So let's go for something a little stronger here. It didn't look like I drew out an id with that attack, so I definitely don't want to use destroy element here. I'm going to use something that'll leave him vulnerable to capture. I think, for some reason, I seem to remember Earth being pretty effective on this guy. I don't know where I'm getting that idea, especially since Cory is the only Earth elemental attack you're supposed to have at this point, and I still only can use it once on the magic coup in the uh, MC that I've got. It's not really magic, I suppose. But he is down. Capture him using the familiar beat method. Volcano! And hey, he drops green quartz, so I don't have to grind Gargantua for them. Although, frankly, Gargantua probably takes a little less time. No crystals, no picture book pages. I guess I can at least see what Volcano does. Predictably, he's a fire attack, and it's a continuous stream. It drains MC a little quickly, but as long as you can train it on an enemy weak to fire, it'll take a lot of damage in a short time. And the next thing I need to do is absorb another one, so... Considering that I traditionally end up fighting the mini-boss twice in one video, why not? We'll just have to take a brief interlude here. Well, this seems like a choice, but I'm pretty sure we get to ask both, so it doesn't really matter which one we ask first. Well, that's Levane for you. She doesn't mess around. Yeah, we'll do that, but first I want to capture another volcano. I guess we didn't really learn anything all that new. We knew that the Fairy Lord was just using Ellen to open doors to other realms. But 
it seems that he chose her. Don't know why. Volcano is actually not that useful when you're surrounded by folks since you're pinned down. So I'm gonna go for some other choices here, see if any of these are more effective. Of course, I haven't used Trent in a while, really starting to miss it. He's got that nice wide attack, carries you over a long distance, and it does a lot of damage. It doesn't cost all that much either. Ogma, on the other hand, pretty tough to hit with. I suppose it's effective enough when it does land, but it's not doing me much good for this fight. I'm going back to the folk I know does something. Yeah, Pori only attacks once, but it's got a double hit there. Nice area when it does land. It's probably the worst earth attack in the game. The volcano falls down when he fires his cannon. It's so cute. There's got to be some element that this guy's weak to. The earth attack knocks him down as often as anything else. Once you get the hang of his pattern, he's really not hard to dodge. Getting a little close to that doorway, though. I don't think I want to actually kill him in the doorway. Just in case he drops another green quartz, I want to be able to pick it up. Come on. Come over here. No, I'm out of range of your attacks. You have to come out here if you want to hit me. There we go. See? Much better. You got me in the face. I suppose I need to wait until he's done attacking before hitting him. That time I got lucky because I knocked him down. Otherwise, I'm probably going to take as much as I dish out if I don't watch myself a bit. And he is down. I really can't tell whether Pori is more or less effective than non-elemental attacks. But I can start doing something else with Volcano now. Defeating Ten Hawk. Yeah, I wonder if I'm going to see any of those in this chapter. Uh, where's the door? Ah, there it is. I always seem to get lost in that room. Anyway, the second half of Orcadia, next time. <laughs>